Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. We are back for another instalment of Spooky Season today. Yes! I'm having so much fun filming these, I really am. And I think like the more that I'm filming, the more inspiration is coming my way. So I'm like getting my mojo back, which is exciting. <laughs> today I'm going to be doing a look inspired by a Viking woman slash goddess slash badass bitch of war basically um, so the complete opposite of me as I sit here in my Mary Poppins jumper <laughs> I've seen a few of these looks kind of pop up over my Pinterest and my Instagram my TikTok all of those fun places to find inspiration and I, yeah something just clicked I was like that looks like fun so I bought a Thor's hammer necklace and said yeah that can be a spooky season tutorial <laughs> so I have a set look that I'm kind of aiming for but if I kind of wander if I dawdle in other places then that's absolutely fine. <laughs> as always everything that I use today is going to be listed down below as well as all of my social media links. Please do make sure you go and give me a like and a follow on all of them and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future uploads especially now that we are in spooky season because why would you want to miss a spooky season upload? I really do. It's the most perfect time of year. Just saying. As always, I will link my Spooky Season playlist in the eye above um, and down in the description box down below. If you want to go and check that out, you can find some more inspiration or you can just watch me turn myself into monsters non-stop. It's great fun. <laughs> Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I did to start this makeup look was just laid down a base layer of foundation. I'm just using my usual L'Oreal True Match and I'm just blending this all over my skin using a like fluffy domed brush um, just to sheer it out a wee bit. I didn't want too much over my face, just a base layer. And then I'm going in with my hands and just melting that into my skin just to make it look a bit more natural. Um, I didn't want the skin to look too caked because you're doing a viking so they wouldn't really wear foundation but just enough to give myself a bit of colour and a bit of a bit more normal skin looking kind of feel and then I'm going in just with a translucent powder and just setting that all over and then I just took a tiny wee amount of my bronzer and just applied that around the perimeters of my face just to bring a wee bit of shape and definition back to my face and I also took that down my nose um, and just around my cheekbones, um, along my jaw and along my forehead, just the usual spots you would go for your bronzer. And then I took a contour powder and I really used quite a lot of this just because I wanted my face to look really angular. So I applied this underneath my cheekbones, underneath my jawline, my forehead and down the sides of my nose. And now I'm taking a product called Rigid Collodion. So I wanted to create the effect of scars like this person has been in like a lot of battles and has gained like a lot of wounds from it. So collodion, basically, it's kind of like clear nail varnish. You apply it to your skin and it grabs a hold of your skin and kind of shrinks um, as it dries and so it pulls your skin together and creates the effect of a scar. So your skin does sink in with this. Um, it's really cool looking. So I just applied one layer of that, let it dry, and then kept applying layers until I was happy with the depth of the scar. And I did a few over my face. And then I just went in with a black kajal from Krylon, and I'm going in really messily and just blending that out using a big fluffy brush. Again, not being perfect with this, the more messy the better. And I took that underneath my eyes as well, making sure to blend out so that it just didn't look too pigmented or too perfect um, and I also took this over the bridge of my nose kind of creating like a mask kind of effect anytime I see like um, photos of this this is generally they usually apply black around their eyes either over one or over two or kind of in this vertical sh or horizontal shape across the face uh, and then I'm going in with a black eyeshadow and applying this right on the inner corners of my eyes and down at the start of my nose. And I'm also going to take it along the outer corner of my eyes and along my lower lash line just to smoke out the colours um, and kind of make my eyes look more deep set and like they've been grabbing a hold of the colour. 
uh, and I'm also taking this very messily over that general shape that I've created and using my finger to blend out some areas of it. And then because I wanted to add a bit of sparkle as you do, uh, this is a liquid crystal eyeshadow from Beauty Bay and I just applied that and then tapped out my finger just to make it look a bit more messy and grungy. And then I'm taking that same black eyeshadow and using it to kind of create these feather like um, lines that are coming down from my eyes and up towards my hairline. And then I took a burnt red and applied this around the edges. Again, you don't have to be perfect with this and you don't have to be neat at all. It's the beauty of this makeup. Um, you can kind of do whatever you want, but I just took this to add a wee bit of colour. And then I'm going in with a black, I just used a face paint, you could easily use a liquid liner, uh, on a small detail brush and then on a fan brush to kind of create these more defined lines coming out from the eyes. Um, and you can do this and then use your finger to blend it out a wee bit more as well. And then I took that black and ran it over a mascara wand and used this to flick some of the product onto my forehead and around my eyes, down my cheeks, just in random areas. This makeup needs to look messy, so I thought paint splatters would be fun. Uh, and then I took a copper pigment, mixed it with a wee bit of mixing liquid from Mayron, and I'm just doing the same thing, creating some lines coming out of my eyes and then flicking it onto my face using a disposable mascara wand as well. Uh, and I just wanted to do this just to make sure there was a lot of different textures and a lot of different colours. The more texture in this makeup look, the better because Vikings wouldn't have used makeup, they would have used like charcoal and stuff like that. Um, so then, just to add a tiny wee bit more definition to the scars, I'm running that same red that I used uh, on and around my eyes, just on the sides of the collodion where it's kind of shrunk the skin in. And then I'm taking a wee bit of my foundation and applying that just in the centre and blending it out ever so lightly uh, just to make it look like more of a scar. And you can see it really, like, I think I applied maybe six or seven layers of the ones on my cheeks. It works better on kind of the fattier areas of your face because it has more skin to pull back. Um, so yeah, I did a few on my forehead but they don't look as deep because there's bone there. Um, so then I took a white eyeliner and I started to draw some kind of Viking runes on my face. So I just went on Pinterest for this and found some wee pictures and stuff of ones that explained them. So I think the one on my forehead is for um, goddess, one of them is for war, one of them is for leadership. Um, loads of different meanings, not that like they had to be that. Um, I just kind of chose the ones that I thought would be most fitting for this character um, and then drew two on my forehead, two on either cheek and then just added some wee dots and stuff like that just to pad out a wee bit. Um, but yeah, you can choose whatever you want, I just went with the ones that I thought would look best. And then I took a burnt a burgundy kind of lip liner, just ran it over my lips very messily and then blended it out using my finger. I didn't really think that the lips needed anything, um, so I just did that. Applied a lip stain into the center of my lips just to make it kind of like a reverse ombre so the center is a bit darker. And I applied some of that burnt uh, burgundy shadow from before in the center of my lips as well, just to finish the makeup look off for now. So now I thought it'd be fun to show you what I did for hair, um, because apparently I'm a hairdresser now, I don't know. I'm moving on up in the world. So I'm actually using some clip-in hair extensions today that I got from Amazon because Vikings were known for their long hair and I do not have long hair because I chopped it all off. So the first thing I'm doing is sectioning a top part out of my hair, taking a small section of hair above or below that part, sorry, I back combing it and then securing a three weft hair extension into the back of my head. I did two threes on the back of my head, I did a single on either side and then I did two twos kind of down at the nape of my neck. I just wanted to make sure I got lots of length um, and it also helps, I mean Vikings, their hairstyles need a lot of hair and my hair is really thin so I just needed a bit more length, a bit more volume just to pad it out a bit more. Um, so yeah, you just want to kind of position these, make sure they're 
like securely in uh, and then I sectioned out this front section here and clipped it away and then on either side of my head I created just a wee normal three strand braid and um, I took it from just behind that front section because that's going to kind of hide the root of it and I also did the same uh, more towards the back of my head I actually used made sure to use the hair from the hair extensions in this one so that it was longer um, and also thicker because I was going to add some jewellery and stuff to it and I did this on either side of my head so I've got four braids in total then with that front section I just back combed it and smoothed out the front of it a wee bit and tied it into a ponytail just using the wee clear elastics that you get um, I get mine from Body Care and I just pulled that tighter, pulled it out a wee bit the great thing with this hair is it doesn't have to be neat and perfect kind of like the makeup uh, so if it's messy and that's probably better to be honest um, and then I started to create more ponytails behind that initial ponytail so just grabbing hair from either side making sure it was centred at the top of my head and I made sure to leave the braids out on either side so they looked like they fell from underneath it so I created four ponytails down the centre of my head and then I'm creating a bubble braid so your first ponytail you want to split in half then take the second ponytail and put it flip it forward through the first one and take the first ponytail that you split in half and join it with the third one. Um, that's very confusing, it's probably easier to watch. So split your first ponytail in half, then pull the second one through and then the first one that you split in half, you then join those ends to the third ponytail. Does that make sense? Probably not. Um, there's better tutorials on YouTube, go search them. <laughs> Um, and then once I'd kind of secured all that, just to create this mohawk effect, um, I just pulled out loads of loose bits just to give myself a wee bit more volume. And then uh, I took a wee section behind my ear and kind of twisted this together just to create more texture. Honestly, the more texture, the better. The more you can incorporate into this hairstyle, the better. Um, so I did two wee twists on either side. And then I'm just going in with, um, my back combing brush just securing down any parts that I thought looked too messy uh, and pulling out sections as well just to give myself a bit more volume my hair is really thin so the more height and the more I could kind of pad this out the better uh, but yeah and I also applied some gold jewellery onto my hair as well um, and then I'm taking a wee bit of fresh scratch just on a black stipple sponge stippling this just in wee random areas, put some on my forehead, some around my lips. Kind of wanted to, it to look like I had like been punched in the face or something and I was like bleeding from my lips. I don't know, that was just my thoughts. And then I'm just taking some, I think this is FX blood, I don't know, I'll list it below. Uh, just on a wee cotton swab and just kind of dabbing this over, using my finger to dab it out. So it kind of looked like it wasn't completely fresh like it maybe been there and it's that's kind of what the fresh scratch is for as well to make it look like it been like scabbed over lovely I know and then I'm taking some more of that blood and using it on a mascara wand and doing the same as I did with the face paint and just kind of flicking it over and making it look disgusting and there you have it guys that is the finished look as always everything that I've used is going to be listed down below as well as all of my social media links make sure you go and give me a like and a follow on those and make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads uh, this look was really fun to do you could absolutely leave it without like the blood and everything um, I was initially going to do that and then I thought nah she's a warrior so she needs to be covered in blood as you do um, but yeah let me know what you think of this one down below and if you have any suggestions for spooky season, please leave them down below as well. As always, I hope you have all enjoyed and I will see you all next time for another spooky season makeup. Bye! I'm wearing a Mary Poppins jumper, but I am not doing a Mary Poppins makeup tutorial, unfortunately. My queen. Oh, turn myself into a viking. I feel like I've just been given a facelift. Woo!
going through that five head down a bit. Look at that guardsy one. <laughs> the dog. It's a vacant dog. He's protecting me. Or just hit yourself in the face with it, Sky. That works too. Oh my god. My fire. The one. Desire. Believe. When I say. I want and have the way. Tell me why you 